Thank you all uh, for returning to our Community Leadership Summit X LCA. Uh, we're going to start with report backs from the conversations that we had before afternoon tea. Then we're going to reconfigure and um, go into our afternoon uh, conversations. We can renegotiate whether or not there's still things we want to talk about, but if we don't have to, we can get into it because then we can't actually uncover any issues. Um, so do I have a volunteer from one of the groups to do the report back? Clinton, well volunteered. Unless there's any concern about doing so. No? Okay. Stop Thanks, guys. I can put the mic on you. I can, I can, I can hold it. All of it. The handy has one. Yep. So I've literally just copied that back onto the wiki now. Um, so we were working on burnout primarily. Um, we we focused on burnout, um, the warning signs of burnout, the manifestations of burnout, uh, strategies for avoiding it, and strategies for escaping it. Uh, we did not end up covering uh, retention, recruitment, uh, succession planning, sustainable pipelines and handovers, <laughs> creating engagement, or having a separate life outside of FOSS. Um, pretty much. Um, we did end up covering uh, health and well-being uh, with an emphasis on mental health. Um, so we got a lot of individual items that don't make sense to go through, uh, but um, in terms of responses to burnout and stress, they seem to... Uh, the strategies for dealing with that seem to fall between two categories, either uh, withdrawal or um, working harder, and the withdrawal could be either from the particular project that you're burning out on or from everything. And similarly, for working harder, that could have mean uh, doubling down effort on the project that's causing problems or uh, working really hard on other projects, which might be important, but it's not as urgent. So procrastinating, for example. Um, a lot of common, the common themes that came up in the strategies uh, for dealing with stress, uh, solitude came up a lot, exercise came up a lot, and getting back to nature came up a lot. Um, there's a lot of other details that we need to go through. Um, I think the nice thing that we had is that um, mostly thanks to my, everyone had uh, input into uh, our responses. So I think in, in terms of having a low stress sort of working group, that, that worked well. Uh, so I've copied and pasted all of my notes up onto the wiki. I will need to go through and munch them a lot. Thank you. So we spent the session talking about recognition and how we do it, how we don't do it, how we would like to do it, and what it looks like and feels like. And we talked about 
some of the areas in which we currently provide recognition, like when we recognize code contributions, when we recognize translators contributions, sometimes we recognize art assets, even less we recognize QA work and review work and the stuff that we're not yet really recognizing are all the warm fuzzy stuff that we don't have words for because we're not recognizing it yet. So we don't understand what it looks like, but when we see it, we go, oh, that was really cool. So we tried to look at what the ways in which we use tools or systems to, um, to track those and to provide recognition on them. And do I hand over now? Sounds good. Excellent. We, we can hand back to um, you. One of the pieces was to actually ask each of our people what they like individually, as, as an individual, how they like to be recognized. And there was a real theme in that, which could generalize to our community. Um, people tend to like one-to-one. -one. They like having face-to-face -face feedback. They like it verbally. And verbally in this community also meant email. Twitter, anything online as well. So there was kind of, that was a free-for-all in how you interpret verbal there because we're globally online kind of thing. Um, it was also kind of important that the uh, feedback be timely. Now, clearly, if you see someone six months later, that's timely for you because that's when you could do it. But uh, having something timely, the place you do it, the media, which we discussed, um, it's also very important that it be very specific to what they did, not... Donna, that, excuse me, Donna, I'm going to use you as an example. Not Donna, that presentation was great. Well, that doesn't really tell Donna what she did well for you. Donna, I really liked it when you welcomed me. I felt really included. Now she knows what she did specifically, and she knows that, well, that's a skill I'm getting a really good handle on. And maybe in her own world, she can other skills or continue to develop a welcoming, but it's up her, to her now. <laughs> Um, the, the other thing in giving back um, feedback um, was also it is as appropriate to link it back to the goals of that community you're in. So, you know, I like that bit of documentation because it meant that da 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 could happen and that fulfilled our visionary goals. All right. So some of the ways that we currently recognize people in the community are giving people commit access to our repositories, giving people maintainer status on projects. Um, sometimes we mention people in release notes. Sometimes we mention them in author files. Sometimes somebody will just jump on Twitter and say, look at this cool thing this person did for this project. Isn't it wonderful? Some of the other forms of recognition which don't kind of fit in with that set was when somebody else just uses your code, whether it's merging it into the project or taking a library you've worked on and building something cool on top of it. And sometimes it's obvious that the person who wrote the code uh, is recognized through. Sometimes it's just, oh, look at this cool thing I made, and then you look on it and go, oh, that was using my bit of code, and I feel really validated through that. So if we can start linking that back and saying, this is the project that enabled the work that I did, and sometimes that's organization level saying, thank you to Project X for your library. It was wonderful, and it made everything up. Uh, what else did we talk about? Examples? Yeah, uh, so some of the examples of cool stuff which probably fits more of the woman fluffers and one idea that was just absolutely amazing. There was a conference that happened and not all of the team could come to it. So at the end of the conference, somebody had bought a bunch of postcards and just said, okay, write a postcard to somebody who's not here, thanking them for a contribution they made and they sent them out at the end of the conference. And the bit that just makes me feel so wonderful about that is knowing that you are missed is an incredibly powerful emotion. And saying, hey, look, we're sorry you couldn't be at the conference, but here's us recognizing that one, you weren't here, and two, you did cool shit.
So anybody who's getting this from the live stream, we're not doing that. At the moment, we're tweeting at Pia War saying, it's amazing the stuff that you do. We're really sad you can't be here. Put fires out in your work, whatever it was you were actually doing that meant you couldn't be here. But you're amazing and we love you. Keep doing cool shit. Absolutely. <laughs> If you're watching a recording of this, tweet at Pia War, because she's awesome and you know it. Um, I think we can move on from that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, do, doing really specific... Some people really like public recognition. Some people really like uh, quiet recognition. Sometimes it's important to ask people what recognition they want. And... I think for a lot of people that will be, I'm just going to sit in the corner and know that somebody has asked how I would like to be recognised and I can't actually say things that would make a difference to me. Um, one of the conversations we had was about somebody who was working on a project within an organisation but they had a third party developer who wasn't part of the organisation doing work on it too and they could buy a present for all of the people within the organisation but because of the laws around um, gifts and that kind of thing, they couldn't provide the same gift to the, to the other developer and they weren't really sure how to recognise it. And the suggestion was just ask them and you know, say, how would you like to be recognised? And similarly, this, the whole idea of the recognition and giving the feedback isn't for the leaders of the group, it's for everyone. The leaders clearly have a role to uh, model this and also to help the newbies understand that that's what we do here, this is the way we recognize, um, but it's for everyone to start doing to everyone. Yeah, definitely there was discussion of top-down as well as bottom-up, as well as sideways, so a leader recognizing your work means one specific thing. One of your peers recognizing your work means another specific thing. And one of the people who are reporting under you or reporting, one of the people who you are leading saying you're doing a great leader thing is quite rare and is completely amazing when somebody says, thank you for dealing with the, the problem stuff. Thank you for being the umbrella because it can be pretty thankful or thankless. And we are grateful when somebody comes up and says, thank you for dealing with the problem, because it's, it's hard work. And that probably helps a lot with burnout. Post-its? Sorry? What we're working with post-its? Ah, oh, yes. Uh, there was another example from another conference where somebody got a set of post-its and just wrote thank you notes to random people or specific people or groups in general and just put them up on a wall somewhere. So we're doing it. We don't know where or when or how it's going to pan out, but that's a thing that we've decided we're doing now. And sometime after this session, we'll probably find a whiteboard. I want to find a wall and do it the hacker way, uh, but apparently the cleaners might come along and f fix all of our fun. But, yeah, maybe we'll find something a little more permanent for that. I've got a red shirt. It's in, it's in hand. <laughs> <laughs> it will get sorted. There will be a space. It may be official. It may not be. Yes. <laughs> I think that's it from us. We will try to type our notes and put them in the wiki format. Try to. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>And yes, please do try and get it in the wiki in one way or another. Don't worry too much about the formatting, just as long as it's in there. Wiki fairies may help with the formatting after the fact. Um, that, was really, that was really wonderful. I'm now wishing I had been a fly on the wall in both those conversations, and that's particularly why I want the wiki <coughs> of those notes. And uh, the burnout notes I already had a quick scan of. Brilliant. So that we've got some kind of record of the, the richness of those conversations. So uh, we have another couple of topics to take us out for the rest of the afternoon. Um, problem behaviour strategies and life cycle growth from forming to mourning. Uh, uh, what's up there at the moment? But if you want, does anyone want to 
shift gear, look at something else that was up on the board more than, than those? Is everyone sort of having a bit of a my brain is full moment? Yes. yes? All right, everybody stand up. Hands in the air. Hands down. Turn around. Hands in the air. Now sit down. Still here. That's right. Okay, hands down. Uh, brains now should have a little more oxygen flowing through them. Okay, so do we want to stick with problem behaviour strategies and life cycle growth? Hands up, yes. It'll do. Anyone? No. Def desperately? No. 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 All right. None of that. All right. So on we go. So again, we'll do we'll do problem behaviour strategies on that side. Life cycle growth. What's the other thing? Morning something something over there. Um, refer back to. Yeah. Was it too? Was it too too distracting? So do you want to sit out in the hallways? And just have a eyeball. Hang on. Yeah, I think you could probably safely use the, the hallway there. There's some people talking, but, you know, you'll talk over them and it'll be fine. <laughs> All right, so I think we're meant to finish at 5.20. Yes? An hour for discussion. Back at 5 for report backs and wrap-up. Yeah? And, uh, and can't um, reiterate enough the value of getting, some, getting the notes done. And the four roles that I, I talked about is um, the, the gatekeeper, the timekeeper, the note taker, and the facilitator. I really want to make sure that within the groups that we, we get a chance to hear from all the people who are involved. It's really easy to kind of sit back and just listen, but we want your voice as well, especially you quiet people who you generally have pearls of wisdom to share, so please share them. And for those who take on the gatekeeper role, if, you look, if it looks like there's a quiet person who's got something on the tip of their tongue, and not willing to interrupt, interrupt for them and let them speak, okay? I'm, I'm very guilty of this, so I feel like I can tell you all to do it, okay? So, go forth, enjoy.
Um, so I don't really have a uh, well-written summary uh, like last time because we've just finished taking the notes and stuff. Um, so I think a potential problem uh, with this group is that we all were going in there with quite different groups and problems that we wanted to solve. So it was at times difficult to sort of step outside um, of the particular problem that you were wanting to solve and try to see uh, the problem from someone else's point of view. Yes. It's been a long day. Um, so we were discussing, uh, discussing uh, life cycles and uh, growth. Um, so this was um, groups, so meetups. This was projects, so particular open source projects. This was conferences, so Linux Conf AU, PyCon Conf. Um, so some of the interesting things in that is that, um, at least with the conferences, you do actually want an explicit uh, wind down period. Like you really want to plan how this is going to finish up um, tidily so that people will actually talk to each other after the conference um, and be able to work again in a few years' time to run the same thing again. Yeah, it's in a utopian dream, Donna, I know. Um, so similar to last time, we, we went through um, a lot of problems and a lot of potential solutions to it. Um, and I'm not sure, like it, uh, it was an interesting discussion and I think, um, I think there are some potential solutions to some of the problems. Um, so, you know, when you're writing down the, the problem and you know, I've sort of paraphrased it as, you know, problem, hurting cats. You know that the solution is going to be kind of difficult. Um, so things like uh, how do you get a bunch of engineers to actually care about user level problems. Um, and, and, you know, essentially what you're doing is you're trying to make the developers not be selfish and not think about users in terms of other developers and think about them uh, think about users in terms of actual users who are using the software. And one of the potential solutions there is bringing on a uh, user interface, user experience person into the core team uh, and give them equal sort of billing when it comes to solving problems. Um, uh, some, some basic sort of stuff about starting up uh, groups and things like that. Um, and I think, I think the overall thing about uh, starting up a particular group was you don't have to um, get everything right the first time. You don't have to have the answer for everything. Rely on your group a little bit, ask questions and get feedback. Um, and because a group is meeting regularly, it's not like a conference, so you can make a mistake in one meetup and fix it in the next meetup. Um, so I've got notes for all this, so I'll shove it up on the wiki in the same way and clean it up a little bit later. Um, so our team dealt with um, uh, problem behaviours and strategies um, and uh, we decided that we were going to first define what problem behaviour was. So a problem behaviour might be um, violation of code of conduct, um, refusal to admit that, there is a, that you know, there's something wrong, that you're doing something wrong, um, and anything that prevents uh, communal growth and causes some kind of conflict. Um, we decided to deal with um, only th th that it was out of scope to deal with things that might affect people's livelihoods. So we d didn't want to deal with workplace conflicts, for example, um, and you know stick to just communities. Uh, what else have I got here? Uh, focusing on solutions. 
Um, we wanted to focus on solutions, so we didn't really. We wanted to try and avoid you know singling anybody out, and also you know having a complaint session about about people's about the problems that people had. We wanted to focus on there were problems. It doesn't necessarily matter what they were. This is how we dealt with them. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, I think the, one of the biggest things that we got out of our session was that having a code of conduct is really important. Um, most of our most of our solutions came back to we have a clear set of things that are acceptable and that aren't acceptable, and you know that means that we've got something to lean on when we want to enforce it. Um, it, it really helps psychologically, I think, to know where your you know where your limitations are and whether you're overstepping your bounds, um, or whether you need to potentially amend your code of conduct to deal with certain issues. Uh, um, a lot of one of the things about the code of conduct is that you have to look at the people need to look at the intent of the code of conduct. One of the issues that we were discussing was um, that the code of conduct was being taken very literally, um, which meant that you know you have to deal with you know, you'd have to write a forty or fifty or sixty page document that says you can't do this, you can't do this. When you do this, it must be done this way, and that's obviously you know unfeasible. And so you have to have some kind of reasonable expectation, and everybody has to have some kind of reasonable expectation that, you know, well, you know, let's look at the spirit of the code of conduct as opposed to the exact phrasing. Uh, where are we? Uh, stuff that's worked for people is, um, I think that the biggest thing that, you know, we discussed was, was that we just have to have a discussion with, we have to, we have to raise the issue, and the, one of the biggest things was raising the issue early, um, possibly privately, possibly pu publicly, depending on on you know the particular scenario. But you need to raise it with the person first, and you know because a lot of the problems are just that the person who's you know who's exhibiting them doesn't realise that they're doing something that other people find problematic. Um, some people want to avoid conflict at all cost, which makes it difficult to want to deal with these kind of problems. Um, I was one of these people and I, it dawned on me at some point that while I'm not dealing with this conflict, I'm kind of in mental turmoil because, you know, it's, that person does that thing, it's a bit unacceptable, I wish they wouldn't do it, I'll just not worry about it. And it, it just got worse to the point where I was kind of beating myself up about it. And so it's, it, it, it really is best to just get it out of the open earlier. A lot of people are, you know, quite reasonable. You know, so just sit them down, have a quiet conversation. So you're doing this thing. It's a bit weird. Um, what else have we got? Um, some people have mental disabilities and other, others are just willfully unpleasant. Uh, and dealing with people who are both of those is really, really tricky, particularly when you want to be an open community that accepts, you know, people from all walks of life, you know, including people who have physical and mental disabilities, and when somebody you know who you're trying to in, you explicitly include is causing a problem, you, you you do everything in your power to avoid, you know, having to kick that person out of that community. But sometimes it really is the only option, and you've got to recognise that that is the case in some scenarios. Uh, how are we doing for time? A little bit more. Um, a lot of people who exhibit these problems externalise the blame and you know, push it back onto the, the community. You know, your code of conduct is insufficient and you've got to recognise when that's happening as well and you know, say, you know what, you've, there's a reasonable expectation here. You're expecting too much of us. In, the reality is that, unfortunately, you are the problem. We aren't going to wear the blame for it and we need you to do something about it or we're going to have to ask you to leave. Uh, you need to be confident in having a solution. You need to be willing to take... Um, to deal with the repercussions. Um, this is made a lot easier by having a code of conduct um, or having, having some kind of token. Um, an example was the white ribbon, which is... Is that for um, prevention of violence against women? Yes, or? it's the male-led uh, campaign to end violence against women. Yeah, so the, the male-led campaign to aid violence against, uh, prevent violence against women. Uh, so having any kind of token or code of conduct that, that you can that represents your values and you can stick to and say, this is what I stand for and I won't be silent about it, is a really good um, shoulder to lean on for you know, saying, this is not acceptable, we need to deal with it, rather than just being silent about it. Um, 
And the last thing that we discussed was um, what would you tell your past self, having dealt with various conflict, what would you say to your past self to um, deal better with that you know, in, in future? Um, and I think the biggest thing was deal with it earlier. You know, have the discussions earlier, have a code of conduct as soon as possible, ideally before any issues arise, you know, take a code of conduct from the Geek Fem Feminism Wiki or whatever. You know, have something that you can, you know, that defines what you accept and what you don't accept so that you can point at that and say, this is what you're doing and it's wrong. Um, I think that that pretty much wraps things up. Is there anything that I missed, guys? No? Cool. Thank you. I'm now in the tricky spot of, you know, how do we kind of wrap up what's occurred today and what do we want to take away as our kind of closing thoughts? So I think like we started, we did a quick kind of intro. I think I'd like to just finish up by hearing from each of you what you're going to take away as your sort of... Uh, I don't know. It's, what's the opposite of an introduction? I don't know. Your outro. Thank you. Outros. And what did you say? Takeaways. Your takeaways. That makes me think about Chinese noodles, though. Well, that's not such a bad thing, is it? Yeah. No, what? Speaker's dinner. Speaker's dinner. Yeah. That, that, that's next. So, look, um, I don't want to talk a lot. I really just want to say one, one thing and a very heartfelt thing, and that is thank you. Really mean it. Can't say it enough for coming and for contributing. Thank you. thank you all. And thank yourselves. Like, let's have a little round of applause before we pass the mic around. <laughs> and I'll also say to continue to engage in the conversation. The, com the community leadership forum dot something, you know, Google it. Or Sorry, so use your search engine of choice. Um, there's a, there's a forum that John O'Bacon runs where these conversations are going ongoing and sometimes they're in fits and spurts around an event like this, um, but other, others kind of trickle along. So I'd, I'd encourage you to kind of be part of that global conversation and, uh, and, and seek that out and, you know, see what else is going and, and feedback. You know, we all invariably come across articles or resources that kind of inform these discussions or are grist for the mill for thinking about these issues, then, you know, let's share them and, and let's keep talking. So I'm done. Again, thank you. I'd really like to hear uh, your thoughts on, on the day and what you're going to take away. I'll start over here. Sorry, I wasn't I'll start. paying attention. I'll start over here. Great um, the word support, so supportive leaders, is, is a thing I'm going to spend looking for and working out what it is and isn't. Support for leaders? Uh, yeah, support in doing all these things. Uh, we burn a lot, so that it's in that context. I think the takeaway is definitely a communicate and collaborate rate. Don't, don't keep your problems to yourself. Um, there's a whole community out there um, and talk with your community. I learned that burnout is a thing. Um, um, and I don't mean to trivialize it by that. I, um, I think uh, more people need to realize that that is a thing that can happen to everyone. I realize that I'm really slow at transcribing notes. <laughs> um, I'm going to go a little bit off topic here and say that we have a bunch of post-it notes that were given to us from the, the desk, and the, the most official word we have is, they don't care what happens. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask people to come and start seeding some of these post-it notes with thank yous, and tomorrow morning, I'm going to find a space out there and stick them up. And I'm going to find somewhere to put the block with a pen and hope that other people start contributing to it. And maybe I'll have a sign or something somewhere. So yeah, come and start seeding the post-it notes with thank yous to people. And we'll hack a solution on the wall. Why is it coming to me? 
because we're asking you. Well, fine. Um, so my takeaways are um, I had wonderful things that I was going to say, so I'll go with this was really awesome. Thank you for facilitating the whole thing, and thank you to the people I was in breakouts with. You guys were great. It was wonderful getting to chat with you. Um, I, I'm going to be taking away how to like get my little community going, and um, which I was really hoping to get out of this, which was really useful. Um, I'm also taking away a blog article that I'm going to a blog article that I'm going to write as a result of something someone said in the last session. Um, um, one of the things I think about is culture in tech, and someone said something about how they were excluded from their culture even though they were physically on site. And I, was, I drew a line to remote workers and why that's not why that breaks. So I have a thing to write about that. Um, but that's like random, not important stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I what I got. Thank you. Um, I was part of the recognition discussion group, um, so something that I took away from that is uh, working on sort of a recognition culture amongst, you know, the teams that I'm part of. Um, yeah, yeah, w working on that and trying to encourage that as much as possible, um, you know, because we said that recognition is great going up the tree, down the tree and across, so everyone appreciates getting thanks for the work that they've done and yeah, feeling appreciated. Uh, also on um, also on recognition for me, there are different types of recognition that people want and that you can ask the people as to how they want to be recognised. Uh, I just have to express being a little bit surprised that uh, such conversations are now taking place. In a wonderful way. I mean, in the sector I work in, we have these kind of discussions all the time. But I was, I was just a bit surprised that, you know, at a technical conference, we're now at the point where we're talking about these things. And I think that's really wonderful. So what I'm taking away is, um, I guess, a warm, fuzzy feeling. Um, oh, well, I, I was only here for the for the final session, um, but certainly um, something I've taken out of the uh, problem behavior strategies discussion was that um, if it is possible to to generalize a lot of the problems um, that the people are seeing, particularly coming at it from um, my involvement in things that are nowhere near the open source community, but um, pretty much everything that people said they'd tried as strategies and and observations they'd made was uh, relatable. So I guess the the um, the thing I'll be taking away was that there are people I know from from very different contexts who have um, who can be talked to about things like this. I think the uh, recognition is important. Um, and lots of people obviously do coding in the system, which is great. Um, but obviously a lot of community people who do the advocacy stuff or you know, the umbrella work or all these other bits that you know the coders don't want to do. So I think recognise that's pretty important. You know, there's a lot of other work that goes on you know, that's not necessarily coding or systems, you know, but then there's no way to sort of measure that or, th or thank them sometimes. So I think finding you know, appropriate ways and to appreciate their work and stuff they do is good. Can I go on? Sorry. Um, 
you don't actually have to solve all problems. There are some problems that you can just let slide and it doesn't matter. Nope. Um, I got the very strong in my face reminder that there's all the stuff I know we should do, like implementing code of conduct, that we should damn well hurry up and do before anything bad happens, that I've known for ages we should do. Um, and the other thing I got was that um, I should really say no to facilitating when I'm tired. Oh. <laughs> you did a fantastic job. Thank though. you. Just the second session, I was starting to melt. Thank you. So, I've I've found that understanding what other people in this space are doing uh, it really does help validate what what I think is is already happening in the community and learning places where we can improve. It's been generally quite useful. Um, um, it, it, it validates what we're doing and highlights where we can improve. And we? Sure. In that context, here uh, the community? The yeah. com communities. <laughs> it's a community, you, community Leadership Summit. Yes, fair enough, too. Um, I, I have to agree with uh, the communicate and collaborate because um, that's, I think that that's the thing that doesn't happen enough and communicate early is I think the key point for me. And often. And often. <laughs> oh, um, could I just say, I was probably obvious to you guys, uh, obviously I'm not a community leader, I'm just really an AV guy. But I saw, you know, all of you were so inviting and I just thought that was really awesome and I can see why you're community leaders. And basically what I learned is, you know, how seriously you take the problem of including everybody and creating a good growing community where you try to make everybody happy, really, and that's, that's where you run into problems when you try to make people that aren't happy, happy, right? And, I, I, yeah, just, just thank you, all of you. I, I learned a lot, you know, just to... Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>